Once bile is produced by the liver, bile through the bile ducts in to the gallbladder. And gallbladder is the place where bile is stored until we consume some fatty food. Basically, the only function of the gallbladder is to store bile and to reabsorb water from the bile during the storage. So gallbladder makes bile more viscous, and increasing viscosity creates some problems. Let's take for example cholesterol stones. So for example, we have a female patient with obesity that has a lot of children and also she is older than 40. So all these factors increase the amount of cholesterol in the blood and thereby the amount of cholesterol in the bile. And now such bile with very high amount of cholesterol income to the gallbladder. And after water reabsorption, the concentration of cholesterol becomes extremely high. Such state we call hypersaturation with cholesterol. And in this state, gallstones are formed very rapidly. So with time, finally, this causes formation of a cholesterol gallstone. And the presence of gallstone in the gallbladder we call cholelithiasis. And such stones inside the gallbladder remain totally asymptomatic. But after intake of the fatty meal, at some point, large amount of fatty acids income to the duodenum. In response to dietary lipids, eye cells of the duodenum secrete cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin is a specific hormone that stimulates contractility of the gallbladder. So, as a result, gallbladder contracts. And by this, gallbladder pushes bile together with cholesterol stone into the cystic duct. Recall that bile flow from the gallbladder into the common bile duct is equal to pressure inside the gallbladder minus pressure inside the common bile duct divided on resistance between them. So with contraction of the gallbladder, the pressure inside the gallbladder increase and as a result flow increase. So by contraction, gallbladder pushes bile through the cystic duct into the common bile duct. In ideal scenario, such gallstone freely pass through the cystic duct, then stone pass common bile duct and enters into the duodenum. And from the duodenum, such stone is excreted with the feces. But sometimes, such stone cannot squeeze through the cystic duct. In this case, stone causes an obturation of the cystic duct, and with obturation of the cystic duct, radius of the cystic duct decreases. With decrease in radius, resistance increase, and with increase in resistance, flow decrease. Basically, with full obturation, there will be no flow of bile through the cystic duct. As we see, the major provoking factor that leads to obturation in the biliary tract is intake of fatty meal. Because its fatty meal induced contraction of the gallbladder that pushes stone into the biliary ducts. The problem here is that contraction of the fully filled gallbladder against fully obstructed cystic duct creates enormous pressure inside the gallbladder, and such high pressure causes major clinical symptoms. To explain this, here we have a gallbladder. Inside the gallbladder we have intramural blood vessel that delivers blood to the cells in the gallbladder wall, and also gallbladder wall have nerve endings. When stone causes an obstruction, the flow of bile out of the gallbladder becomes disrupted. So bile remains in the gallbladder. As a result, when gallbladder contracts, we have outer force of contraction that acts on gallbladder wall. And also fluid that remains in the gallbladder cause pressure from the inside. As a result, gallbladder wall becomes basically compressed. Such compression, first of all, is sensed by nerve endings that carry the signal to the foregut autonomic nerves that in response to this becomes activated and the activation produces an abrupt onset of dull pain in the abdomen, moderate to severe in intensity. Because gallbladder is localized in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, typically biliary pain starts in the right upper quadrant. And on physical examination with palpation, pain will cause tenderness in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. Also, dull pain in the right upper quadrant typically associated with nausea and vomiting, and such pain pattern we call biliary pain. With full obstruction of the cystic duct, gallbladder remains fully filled with bile despite numerous contractions. 
and the accumulation of the bile inside the gallbladder cause gallbladder over distension. And on physical examination, we can determine a mass in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. Because gallbladder remains over distended, such gallbladder can come in contact with diaphragm, and numerous contractions of over distended gallbladder can cause irritation of the diaphragm, which is sensed by phrenic nerve. And phrenic nerve carries this impulse to the cervical nerves. And as we know from the cervical nerves also originate supraclavicular nerves that innervate the back of the shoulder. So this pain impulse from the gallbladder ends up in supraclavicular nerves from the right side. And because these nerves innervate back of the shoulder, we sense diaphragm irritation as pain in the back of the shoulder, which can be just pain in the back. So biliary pain often radiates to the right shoulder or to the back, and paradoxically, biliary pain also manifests as shoulder pain or back pain. The ideal scenario is that stone will finally squeeze through the cystic duct, and a condition when obstruction of the cystic duct resolves by itself typically in 1-5 to five hours, we call biliary colic. Then stone will pass common bile duct and sphincter of odi and will be excreted with the feces. Once stone will squeeze through the cystic duct, pain resolves. Typically, it takes 1-5 to five hours to squeeze the stone through the cystic duct. Because squeezing of stones through the cystic duct causes mechanical damage to the mucous membrane of the cystic duct, patient may note a mild abdominal aching or soreness even after the resolution of the attack for one to two days. Because obstruction is temporary and lasts a relatively short period of time, biliary colic do not cause inflammation, so white blood cells will be normal, and there will be no fever. Also, because common bile duct remains open, bile still can freely pass to the duodenum, so biliary colic do not cause cholestasis, as a result ALP and GGT usually remain within normal range. Also, there will be no liver damage, so ALT and AST will be normal. If stone cannot squeeze through the cystic duct, a condition known as cholecystitis develops. Initially, it's acute cholecystitis, but with time, after the numerous episodes of acute cholecystitis, chronic cholecystitis can develop. The reason why we call this condition cholecystitis is that prolonged obstruction will cause inflammation of the gallbladder wall, and exactly itis in cholecystitis means inflammation. With inflammation, white blood cells will increase, and exactly leukocytosis and fever is the major diagnostic difference between biliary colic and cholecystitis. Also, if stone will squeeze through the cystic duct, but will stuck in the common bile duct, then cholecystitis can develop. And in cholecystitis, because common bile duct remains obstructed, bile cannot pass into the duodenum, so cholestasis develops. And cholestasis causes significant elevation of ALP and GGT which is the major diagnostic difference between biliary colic and cholecystitis. The treatment of biliary colic is primarily surgical, which is cholecystectomy. The concept is that typically patients have multiple stones inside the gallbladder. So there is no point to remove gallstone after the gallstone surgically for the rest of the life, if you can simply remove the gallbladder. And as we know, the function of the gallbladder is just to stop bile and to absorb water from the bile. So if we remove the gallbladder, bile still will income to the duodenum directly from the liver through the common bile duct. So loss of the gallbladder is not a big deal for us, compared to the high risk of potential complications. Also, if patient refuses to undergo surgical treatment, you should prescribe a low cholesterol diet and also orthodoxicolic acid.